Well, welcome to this week's Dividend Cafe. And for those of you listening on the podcast, I apologize. Um, I'm recording the video and the podcast simultaneously. We normally have different uh, content at the Dividend Cafe um, p- podcast. And then the YouTube video goes on Facebook, goes wherever it goes. Those of you watching are getting kind of a separate um, set of comments and approach and perspective each week. And of course, we have a lot of people that listen to both. But as we sit here now, it is Wednesday evening, and I am running to go speak to a bunch of clients in the Chicago area. And tomorrow I'm on a plane and there's meetings, and I just don't know if Thursday is going to afford me the ability to record both. So I'm killing two birds with one stone right now. You probably didn't need all that explanation, but I wanted to explain because it is an important week and there is a lot of things we talk about. It's definitely a week in which I'd really encourage you to read DividendCafe.com. And I probably say that every week and I definitely think it every week. But this week in particular, I just think there's certain things that are there, charts and an elaboration of different um, principles, perspectives that uh, are pertinent to what's going on in the market right now, I think are very important. The big story, in my opinion, is the fact that earnings season is going so, so well and market prices have not moved much higher. As I'm sitting here talking now on Wednesday evening, the uh, market is down a little bit on the week. It isn't brutally bad, but it, it, it just it hasn't gone the direction you would have expected it to considering the big earnings surprises to the upside, the very positive forward guidance for how companies are projecting into the future. And, and uh, from our perspective, which is most important, we're extraordinarily pleased with how uh, earnings have gone, um, excuse me, how, how re- companies have reported their capital allocation plans into the future. We have significant commitments on capital expenditures. We love the dividend growth we're seeing, particularly in holdings of ours. There's been significant stock repurchases. There's just a lot of stimulative activity and investor-friendly capital allocation. So essentially, unless further evidence says to to the contrary, we're quite convinced that this is the continued uh, tension point around interest rates rising. Um, I believe that stocks would have further to go down if we were to be, receive real evidence, not of inflationary concern, but of actual inflation. And I'm very skeptical that that will play out. I think that we will have higher inflation than we've had last year and year before, which was almost nil. But I don't really believe that we're going to all of a sudden see a significant enough increase in inflation that would impact um, uh, equity markets and the net present value. So with that said, I would suggest that you are going to have continued noise and continued volatility uh, around equity pricing and that that could last for um, a couple more months. I mean, I don't I, I wouldn't dare to time it. I don't know if it's done in two days or, or six months. But what I do know is this, the, um, the, the earnings that underlie market pricing are growing. The valuations have gotten more attractive, not less attractive. And therefore, I would suggest it is imperative that investors um, focus on the underlying fundamentals and not the short-term noise around interest rates, dollar value, foreign exchange currency, things of that nature that are by definition impossible to fully forecast in price and build expectations around. Now, because we go further than just simply that philosophical belief system around equity prices, but actually go so far as to say it is the underlying dividend growth that we most care about in achieving investor return that is um, lower beta, meaning lower risk, lower volatility, and that is more repeatable and defensible and creates cash flows that investors either want to use now or want to have compound to use later. Um, I would argue that it's a wonderful time to be investing, um, even if the stock prices are not immediately reflecting it on a month by month basis right now. We're hardly in any kind of a bear market. It is. It's been very volatile, and and um, you could argue that the the uh, period was overdue for it. It's gone longer than I would have expected, as the trade tariff noise has somewhat subsided. Now I think the different conversation on interest rates and the dollar and so forth. Um, there's clearly just enough skittishness underneath it that it's very difficult for the market to catch a big rally. But these are opportunities or good names, good. 
um, priced investments can become extremely opportune to be buying and acquiring. So yeah, I think our timing was pretty good in the way that we underweighted equities in our master asset allocation. Um, we didn't we didn't uh, get bearish, but we turned down the knob a bit, and I think that's been opportunistic. But it's entirely possible we could see ourselves increasing our weighting to equities by the end of the year, um, uh, not not the opposite. But we don't know that. I mean, there are other factors around the Fed, around monetary policy, around global conditions. So there, it, it's just a, a period right now that is forcing me as the chief investment officer at the Bonson Group to be heavily engaged in, in research and global macro and, and have a lot of uh, uh, competence and insight and perspective around um, big picture conditions. But on the bottom up and little picture conditions, I'm very pleased with what I'm seeing. And that's the environment that we have to share to the degree that bonds don't represent a great hedge to equities um, because of the lack of deflationary forces that may be pushing equities down, which are generally very good for bonds. Then that really forces us to be heavier uh, allocators into the alternative investing space. Um, if we wanted to kind of bring down overall ec equity beta and fixed income doesn't represent the most tactical way to do it, then we increase into alternatives. And I think we have tremendous fortunes doing that, tremendous good fortune and historical record in doing that. So we focus there as well. There's a lot to chew on there, but this has been a purposely short video and short podcast because of timing issues. And I apologize for that. We beg you to reach out with any questions, comments you have. We always want to interact. And we thank you for listening to this week's Dividend Cafe. Look forward with our Advice and Insights podcast next week to a very special guest in the small cap equity space. And of course, next week brings a whole nother week of perspective information, news developments around all the things affecting capital markets, your portfolio, so we continue to work. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.